What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do these PolyFX effects on text in Cinema 4D. A lot of X's in there. Uh, but here's some of the effects I'm going to be showing you. Uh, here's one of them, it's kind of like an explosion effect behind the text. Uh, one with some like colored pipes on it. Uh, one with like a, it's like a construction sort of metallic. Uh, I don't know, like pipes. I don't know what to really call it, but it just looks neat uh, as an effect. Here's one with like part of the logo getting shattered away. And then here's one that kind of, kind of combines them all. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to recreate this one exactly because this was just me like messing around for hours uh, with all of these actually. Uh, but I'll show you these four and then maybe we'll try to put them all together at the end. But let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is open up your Lightroom or whatever. I'm using my own Lightroom which you can buy in my store if you're interested, uh, that'll be in the description. But you, the first thing you want to get is Mo Text, so Mo Graph Mo Text. And you want to align it middle, type in whatever you want. So I'm just going to type Quezzy. I'm going to make the depth 125. And then the font I'm going to be using is called Bandwidth something something BBK or BRK. Um, where is it at? Bandwidth, bandless, BRK, that's what it's called. And I'm just going to bump up the size to like 400 or the height. And I'm just going to drag it down so it's a little more centered. And then you want to go to caps. And this is like the important stuff. So what you want to do is get a fillet cap for both start and end. Set it to two or three radius. I do two. And then five steps. There you go. Also, if you can't see your lines, like they're not black, you want to go to display and shading and parentheses lines, the second one down. Um, now we want to go ahead to type at the bottom of caps and go to triangles. And you could leave it like that. I like to go ahead and check regular grid and then bump up the size to something sort of like that. That's pretty good. So like 33. Um, next, we want to go to MoGraph effector random and then you can just kind of type in low digit numbers for like whatever so six seven five sure and then you want to check rotation and sort of do the same thing but negative so i'll go like negative that's a little too much let's go negative 10 uh maybe negative seven here maybe a little more 15 that works and then we'll go like positive six that works so there you go you get a little more uh entertaining text a little like a little more is going on here i'm gonna drag that random below the mo text and i'm actually gonna add this fruititious material to the mo text which is actually my materials pack if you if you want to buy that that's also in my store but you can use any other material too it's up to you and we're just gonna duplicate that mo text so we have this guy and i'm just gonna hide one of them and work with the second one so first thing we want to do then with that text is go to MoGraph and PolyFX and we want to drag that PolyFX into the Mo text um, and then we want to go ahead to MoGraph again and get a cloner and add the text to the cloner. You'll notice your text duplicates but we don't really want that so select the cloner, go to object and make that count one. There we go, and you can go ahead and drag that down because it jumps up. Um, so I'm gonna do something like that, so it's centered again. And now let's go to simulate cloth, cloth surface, and drag the cloner into that. And you'll notice your text will kind of deform a little bit, uh, depending on what the font is and the segments and stuff. Um, you can see mine kind of just like bursts out a little bit, which is completely fine. Um, then you wanna go to subdivisions, press zero and then go to thickness two. There we go. And now select the poly FX, go to MoGraph effector plane. And you'll notice now stuff is starting to happen. And this is kind of like an exploding look, it looks crazy. Um, but what we want to do is go to Y actually, just select parameter so there's less that you have to deal with. It's not parameter and effector selected. Go to Y and select zero. Now nothing's going on, which is fine. And 
if we go to Z and we actually go negative, you can see you get that effect I was talking about earlier. So if I render that out real quick, it's, I don't know what to call this effect. It just reminds me of like construction going on, but it's like metal. I don't know. It reminds me of like Death Star or like some sci-fi thing. I don't know. It's just a really neat looking effect though that you can do with text and like have bits of this showing behind text or something like that. But if I, yeah, if I render that out, that's sort of the look you get. And uh, if you want to do something, then you can, if I go to the text that was duplicated earlier on and make that visible, and I'll actually have to line it up now. Like that, there we go. And let me get out of the camera, zoom in a, just a bit. If I bring it back a tad so it sticks out a little more, I can then add a color to the uh, one that's like being affected. So this guy, and then you can see we get that like pipe look sorta on the text. There you go, which I think that's pretty neat. That's like a cool little effect that you could add. Um, by itself it might be a little boring, but if you incorporated more things into it, it'd be pretty neat. So yeah, so that's two of the effects so far. Um, let me just hide this and then make this material normal again. Uh, let's go back to the plane and let's go back to Z and let's just make that zero again. Now we want to check scale and we want to check uniform scale and absolute scale. And if you notice, as we decrease closer to one, the text starts to disappear. So at one, it's completely gone. Actually, you can see specs, which is weird. That's never happened before. Okay, so, but there's nothing there. All right, that's weird. But um, as you get to negative one, it disappears. But if you go up the other way, you get the other effect I was showing you, which is this sort of explosion. So that's like a little too much. But if we go like 1.4, there you go. Um, and then we go back to that text that was duplicated. We can make that visible again. And let me just change the camera angle. And this time we're going to bring it forward. And we can have, it doesn't have to go all the way so it's like completely sticking out. We can have some bits sticking through it. There we go. And boom, you get something like this. Now the light might be a little weird because it's a little, f actually no, it should work. All right, so there we go. There's the effect. Looks pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So I'm just going to go back to that plane. And actually, I'm going to hide this guy too. Let's go back to the plane. Let's make the scale now negative 1. And there we go. Now it completely disappeared. Um, and let's go to fall off. And let's select, uh, we'll do linear first. So, and actually, we're going to have to rotate this. So I'm just going to rotate it. 180 or 90 degrees and you'll notice you can kind of make it disappear and come back and this would be perfect for uh, animation sort of stuff but there you go that's like a pretty neat looking uh, effect that you could do you could do like half of it uh, but what I did was instead of doing a linear I did box and you could do like any shape really it's up to you you can just play around with all the shapes they have there um, and then I just extended the size of this box and or horizontally and on the z-axis so front to back like that so you get the top bit and the bottom bit and I should actually bring it down so it's a little more central like that and then if we bring this text back and we're actually gonna have to move it back to where it was like there we can add a color to that now and boom there's that next effect that kind of has the gray part disappearing and kind of shattering into nothingness and you could actually do it this way which is what I think I did um, move it forward a little more something like this just so there's like a little more pieces there. You can kind of see how that works, which looks pretty cool as well. All right, yeah, so this, you get something like this then, it looks pretty cool. 
Um, the last thing I want to show you guys is not the all of these put together because that would be really difficult to replicate and I don't know how I did that but I'm going to show you this effect that I recently discovered doing this uh, after I discovered all the other ones so I'm just change the falloff back to inf infinite go to parameter and I'm going to uncheck scale I think that's what I did and let's bump up the Z this time so it kind of expands like that you can see that which looks really cool on itself kind of looks like sort of like another way to do an atom array effect uh, I guess like expanding I don't know if you guys know what I mean but um, if we go to rotation then you can bump up the rotation and get like some crazy uh, particle looking things you know what I mean and uh, just get some crazy looks and that would also be really dope for like an intro having all this like craziness come together and just kind of have like it blown up something like that and then morph together you know what I mean so this is just like another thing you can do just get like a crazy uh, like abstract look sort of deal but yeah guys that's essentially everything I wanted to show you if you use all those you can get that final effect that I showed up earlier but yeah guys hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial hopefully you learned something hopefully you can implement this uh, in your own designs and I thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Quezzy where I tweet stuff daily. Uh, subscribe for more tutorials. Like this video. At 100 likes, I'll put this file in the description, which has all the pre-made effects already set up. So you just have to change the text name, uh, which makes it really easy for you guys. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. I'm just going to let this render out, and then I'll say peace.